Greetings, everyone, and welcome to Fuller's um, All Nation Food and Arts Festival. Uh, we're in our final week. It's been a wonderful festival of cooking and art and um, getting to feature so many of our students and alumni here at Fuller. Super duper exciting. Uh, my name is Lauren Hance, and I am a student at Fuller, and I am the leader of the Brim Collective, which is a student group for arts students. So super excited to feature some of our, our members here. Um, tonight, we're going to be viewing a film called Father Mary by uh, Sari Martin Concepcion. And a little bit about Sari. Sari began her career with a series of assistant jobs in the entertainment industry before beginning a decade-long partnership at talent at a talent management firm, uh, Spectacle Entertainment Group. Um, at Spectacle Entertainment Group, she primarily oversaw the careers of various rock stars and became a right hand to producer manager Andy Gold and a longtime client Rob Zombie. She actually. Um, <laughs> But she departed Spectacle. I'm sorry, I'm reading and my brain is not working well. Um, she departed Spectacle in 2016 to get a master's degree in theology and arts and to pursue her own writing and producing projects. Um, she currently writes, records podcasts, and works with a nonprofit called Blueprint 1543 and helps run uh, soyourdeconstructing.com. She was born and raised in LA and currently resides in Portland, Oregon. We are so excited to have Sari here with us. Um, we're going to view her film and then after that we'll have a talk back with the artist herself. So without further ado, Father Mary. I was thinking we would just meet outside, if that's okay. Sure, yeah, this is great. Wherever you want. <laughs> so, how's recovery going? Uh, we, we don't have to go right into all that. <laughs> I mean, how are you doing? Oh, thanks, but I'm okay. Yeah, but I mean, what do I even call you now? Like, Father Mary? <laughs> that wouldn't make much sense, Reverend Mary? Just Mary is okay. Sure, yeah, of course. I'm so glad we're doing this, thanks for Thanks for meeting with me. What's this? Oh, this is actually really cool. It's my travel Eucharist set for when I do home visits. I like this one. It has Jesus and the apostles under the lid. Oh, nice. Getting back on track. How is sober life? I mean, I can't hear a little bit more about how you're doing. No, I don't think so. We're not old friends, David. Well, I'm almost a year sober now, if you care. I, I do care, that's great. That's really wonderful news. I, at another time, I might have been angry that you couldn't have done it sooner, like for me. I know that we're all on our own journey and it's God's timing, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, I've, I've been through some really dark places these last couple of years. And I've had a lot of time to think about what I did to you. And part of that is I'm working the steps with the sponsor, and I'm on the ninth. Amends. Right. You made the list, if you can believe it. I'm trying to start doing things right. I'm sorry my disease hurt you. I know there aren't good enough words to tell you how sorry I am, and I know that I wouldn't do it justice. I'm sorry that I disappeared. I was such a fucking junkie, I couldn't be the husband you deserved. I intended to love you well, and I'm trying to align my intentions with my actions. I missed you, and I'm thinking about you every day and praying for you every day. Thank you, David. And I guess I really just wanted to know if you think you could ever forgive me.
Yes. I forgive you. Hello. Are you serious? It does me no good to hold on to the anger. Thank you. Can I give you a hug? Can I ask you something else? Sure. It's about your church. Okay. Oh, does your church have like a fund or something for helping people a little bit down on their luck? Because I, when you're like me, I can't find any David, fucking David, don't work. do this. What do you mean? Was that what this was all about? Just sucker me in on the forgiveness thing and hit me up for some cash? I can't say that that's a true sign of a changed man. You want me to go pick up a drug test right now? Cause I get piss in a goddamn cup Keep for you your right voice now. Down. No, no, no! I'll piss in a cup for you, Mary. I work here. It's so unfair. You won't fucking believe me. What happened to your neck? What the fuck do you mean? What happened to my neck? I'm not doing this. I know how it goes. Oh please. I wish you all the best. Here, you forgot your box. Does your congregation know how sexy you are? Because I have proof. <laughs> what are you talking about? Let me show you something real quick, okay? You got a minute? You got a minute? Pastor Mary, how would you feel if your church staff got a copy of this? No. no. Might be fun for them to see that side of you. What do you want? Just wire me 3K. Reverend Mary! Annie! Huh? I know, I'm really early for our meeting. Oh. I just... Uh, David, Annie, Annie, David. Hey, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. Sorry. <laughs> We just need a few more minutes to wrap up what we were yeah, talking no. about. Um, I'm gonna get her settled in my office and then I'll be back to finish what we were discussing. Okay. I'm sorry. Oh, I'll be back in a few, hang in there. Hey, Mary. Tom. Uh, hey. Um, I'm about to get choir practice started, but there's uh, like this weird guy in the, uh, in the lobby here. He's got a band-aid on his neck. So you know him? Thanks, Tom. Yeah, I got it. Okay. But he's got, so he's got a band-aid on his neck. Yeah. Okay. 1529, that is an old song. David, I thought we were going to meet outside. I was just looking around to see if there's a bathroom maybe it's somewhere. It's outside. Oh, Let me show okay. you. Okay. All right. What are you doing, man? You can't see the fuck it's me. up to me, man. What are you talking? In the photo. What? You can't see my face. No one will believe that it's me. Are you crazy? It's clearly you. Prove it. Let me see. You want to see? I'm gonna give a huge round of applause for that film. Thank you so much, Sari, for sharing your film with us. Um, I think first, you know, usually we all like to just kind of know, you know, what was the inspiration for this film? You know, how long ago did you make it? Um, but just some of those kind of general questions to tell us a little bit of background on the film and, um, you know, what inspired you and, and, and how the process worked. 
Sure. Yeah. We, um, uh, well, first of all, thanks for screening it. I really appreciate the opportunity to share and I hadn't watched it for a while, so I felt a little tense <laughs> while watching it. Um, watching but, uh, baby. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, but I filmed it towards the, um, in like fall of 2019. Um, but these things take time and we edited it for a long time. <laughs> um, my um, husband who is in the film, Steven Cervantes, he also edited it. So we went back and forth working on edits for like many months. So it wasn't actually until lockdown, lockdown when uh, he got laid off when, <laughs> when we actually finished it. So that was something to be grateful for um, actually getting the chance to to get it and um, fine tune everything um, in the middle of 2020. And then we ended up submitting to some festivals, some which got canceled, some which got it postponed. Um, but I've been writing for a long time and writing is a very comfortable space for me. I have a lot of projects that I started, you know, at various stages of development and ideas and, um, I kind of, I, I actually got the opportunity to apply to a program for female filmmakers um, hosted by Tribeca in New York. And I got an invite to apply to this program, but you had to have directed something. Um, writing and producing was not uh, enough. So I decided in order to apply for this program, which I didn't get into, which is fine because it still motivated me um, to, uh, I, I, directed father mary in order to get a director's credit under my belt to actually get one done and um and apply to the the program so that was the motivating factor and um you know being able to shoot at fuller was <laughs> a gift uh, a good location and um, with any sort of location fees wavered was uh, a huge gift and a huge advantage so those are some of the things that led to me um putting it together I, I wrote the first draft I wrote at a bar and I tried really hard to, to find a bar, but it didn't come together. It probably would have, if we had already been in lockdown because the bars would have been like, sure, pay us to do it. Whatever. What else are we doing? <laughs> yeah. 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 No. <laughs> That's fantastic. So, um, so you shot this while you were in school or were you just no. living in the area at the time? No, I was a student at Fuller. Um, I finished in 17 something like that. I think that was when I graduated, got, I did the MAT program. And then uh, I ended up getting a job at Fuller. So I worked at Fuller for two years. So it was during that time while I, while I still worked at Fuller. Oh, that's fantastic. Yeah. Um, yeah. so talk to me about the script itself and the story. It's very yeah. engaging, very interesting, brings up so many, um, dynamics about the, you know, a, a yeah. life in faith and in ministry and just the reality of, of life in general. So, so talk to me about your, um, kind of inspiration for the film. Totally. Um, I, with storytelling relationships have always been kind of a main um, fascination for me and exploring just how complicated it can be to just love somebody and how to love somebody and um, how that interacts with identity. Um, I think that's a big thing for me. Um, so just the um, the way that when you really love somebody, uh, you start doing things, you give them the benefit of the doubt, you uh, make sacrifices for the relationship. Um, and the question of where, when does, when do you start become, becoming taken advantage of, um, you know, stuff like that, that's really complicated and difficult. And especially if you are trying to be a good Christian, <laughs> it makes it even maybe more complicated. So, you know, I just thought you don't, you'd also don't see a lot of, I don't know, there's a lot of stereotypical clergy roles in films. So I really wanted to do something with, uh, a clergy person who, but it wasn't about like being a creepy, like doing an exorcism or something, <laughs> you know, um, just like a woman trying to like, she's got this new role and she's navigating um, her identity in that role. And then, you know, there's this blast from the past. So um, 
I do have, you know, I have a relationship in my past with someone who was an addict. And so, I, and, um, and then, you know, that character being played by my current husband, <laughs> I don't know what that says. Um, there's probably like some really, you could really psychoanalyze me for that one, but, um, <laughs> that just means so, you're creative. I mean, you're using your resources. Let's I'm using it. my resources, right? I'm like, babe, this isn't weird for you, right? Um, yeah. No, but obviously um, there was a, a plenty of cre creative liberties. It's not like a, a, an autobiographical piece at all. Um, sure. But so, yeah, those were some of the themes I wanted to explore. And um, and yeah, that's what happened. Things go bad pretty quickly, you know? <laughs> um, yeah. I also had like initially... Um, had like some music cues in the film where like I had her listening to like some heavy metal in the car and stuff but I ended up I mean and, and that stuff gets complicated sometimes if you want to like license music and pay need to pay for stuff yeah. or or write it yourself or something but um but I really in the end wanted to I took it all out and I liked it like that I was like these church bells are very you know sort of daunting and um and that was a decision I made right at the end too. So anyway, now I'm rambling. Sorry. Uh, no, yeah. that's great. We, the, this it's fun to learn all the little details about making a film. Yeah. You know, so many people are, are not filmmakers. You know, we love to, we consume film, we watch television, you know, we do all that, but kind of the nuts and bolts behind it and how we make it and the decisions that um, sure. that go into that are always really fascinating. So, so that's a fun mm -hmm. little tidbit. Do you have any other, like maybe one more fun little tidbit or surprise that came up while you mm. were shooting or editing and you were like, it was maybe one of those mm. happy accidents or, um, anything um, like that. There's, I think there's like a lot, like a couple of biggies. One was <laughs> that I found out like, oh, we, I found out I was pregnant like a week before we shot the film. So <laughs> that didn't really affect anything. I did have this like silent air about me of like, I can do anything pregnant that I could do not pregnant. Like I'll, you know, like, I don't know. It was just like my own mental game. Uh, and then um, there was a whole scene that we shot like out in the, um, what do they call that area? You know, the walkway in between, like in front of, in the middle of Fuller, where it's just beautiful. Everyone's walking their dogs, you know, is that, like the walkway there. Like a little we quad. I, I, you know, I'm in the Houston campus. So oh, I oh don't, sorry. Not exactly sorry. Sure. Yeah, Pasadena <laughs> campus. Gotcha. Makes sense. Anyway, we each had this whole other scene like on a bench where it was just like right before the title comes up. It was just Mary on a bench reading a book and a guy walks up to her and he says, what are you trying to do? Some kind of sexy priest uh bit or something like that like he accuses her of just sort of like making a mockery of it because he assumes she's wearing like a costume and she's like too pretty to actually be a priest or he doesn't believe in that or whatever and she tries to explain but he won't listen and he's like i don't think it's very respectful and he just walks away um and then it cuts to you know like father mary um and i really liked it but i really wanted was pretty brutal with my edit and i wanted to just cut down to what the movie was about and uh even though that kind of that kind of stuff is sort of implicit and under the surface in the film it's like context it's not really what the mm -hmm. film's about and if you want your opening thing to be like what the movie's about and so I made the decision to cut that and my brother was in that scene um but I was like I cut it it's not he got cut on the cutting floor he got ah. cut he, yeah he yeah he ended up on the cutting room floor and um and I decided to start the film with just that shot of that there's a theology book on the front seat it's like God and human sexuality or something like that um and I decided to just like start with that because that was more about like what the film was about so. Right. Well, you know, and it's really lovely because she's wiping, you know, this lipstick off mm -hmm. and, you know, it's like she wants to wipe away her past. You know, it's like, you know, and, but, there, but there's so much more wrapped up in that. I can't give these impressions. I can't, you know, I, I can't be who I used to be. I'm changed. I'm transformed. 
Um, you know, and I'm walking into this situation with someone from my past and, and, you know, how do I, how do I reconcile that? Um, oh, and we do have a note here. It's called the mall where she was. That's what it was at Fuller. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. It was like Errol Uh, Burns or something. I think that's the name. Yeah. Um, but you know, it's interesting as, as people, um, you know, I think even a lot of students at Fuller, um, you know, sometimes uh, w- when we come to faith, if we come to faith kind of later in life or, um, you know, there's this past that we kind of have to reconcile with. And what do we do when people that were uh, integral parts of our past kind of show up? And that was that was the feel I got that maybe she maybe she wasn't always a spiritual person or um you know, or, or, I mean, maybe she was, right. I, I wasn't, um, you know, I wasn't sure it left me to wonder and kind of ask a lot of, of questions about that. Well, okay. If she was a spiritual person. How did she get connected with this guy and what happened, you know, and if, and if she was, that makes it a lot more impactful of having to leave and, um, and then also being kind of manipulated by someone and how does that affect you in your ministry? Um, yeah. she's obviously trying to hide it. Um, which is very fascinating rather than kind of coming forward with her staff or saying, Hey, right. I have this husband, you need to be yeah. on the lookout for him. You know um, you know, we, we had situations in our church where there's, there's been situations like that. And, and I want to know what this person looks like. I need to know who they are if they show up um, you know, those kinds of things to, to protect our, 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 our people. Um mm-hmm you know, yeah. um, as much as we want to, to serve and hope for transformation of someone that is manipulative or abusive, but, um, yeah, you know, maybe she hasn't, maybe she's struggling with being fully integrated, you know, like I, as a person, you know what I mean? It's like, oh, there's clearly, this was something traumatic. Um, mm-hmm. and you know, if they were, if you had a picture of them, you know, if, them, if that was intimate or whatever, like, it, you know, there's, if they're married, like, there's nothing wrong with that, but like, you know, and no one, maybe no one would have faulted her for it, or maybe they would have, and they shouldn't, you know, but, um, yeah, it should raise those types of questions. And I was, you know, intentionally didn't want to spell everything out. There's a lot of, a lot of, a lot of questions about their history. So yeah. it's not all clear, but well, it raises yeah. questions for us in the ministry of how much do we divulge? And I mean, I really think mm-hmm. we should and be upfront mm-hmm. with our, not, I mean, you don't have to be upfront with everybody in the world, but your staff right. and people know so that it's like, totally, you know, the, the more you confess, but I think, I think the film really brings that to mm-hmm. the surface and makes us ask good questions about mm-hmm. what, you know, what do we need to be transparent about in the ministry? Yeah. Um, yeah. because it's, it's vitally important this. and important that we support one another. Was that kind of one of your goals with the film? Um, gosh, no, I didn't go that in that direction, you know, overtly with my, you know, or with great intention. Um, I definitely have those, a lot of those types of questions too. Um, and I used to be in a, before we moved to LA, I was part of the staff at a church plant where we dealt with issues like that and lots of questions around, you know, you know, authenticity and vulnerability and how, but like, you know, but also boundaries, like what, what's, what's the wise thing, you know? So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm glad that you're drawing that from that because it's definitely of concern to me too. And, and thought provoking for sure. I mean, because it does, it speaks to so many audiences. I love that about the film. Mm -hmm. It doesn't, it's not, you know, it's not necessarily for, you know, the, the church Mm -hmm. folk, though there's a lot for us to garner from it. And, Mm -hmm. um, it's not alienating to those that aren't in the church because she's very real, you know, Mm -hmm. Mary's very real. Um, her struggles Mm -hmm. are very identifiable. Right. And, um, bring kind of a balance to clergy that we don't, like you said, don't always see. Um, so was that, you know, was that something that you were thinking of as well when you were developing this character? I mean, you know, you spoke to, Mm -hmm. you know, what do we do with addictions and people and how do we love them? Well, but Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, yeah, I definitely wanted her to just be like a real person who had, you know, and clearly had, had a had transition in her life where she pursued this vocation. Um, 
I guess I just, and, and how that might, you know, he makes the joke father, Mary, which is why I, I called the film. Like he doesn't know yeah. what to call her. Like, it's like, who are you now? You know, that's a great, it's and, a super funny line. It's perfect. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And she's like, just call me Mary, you know, <laughs> but, um, but even though he's this like kind of hostile figure, um, she's like, you know, not perfect either. And she is trying to close the door on a chapter when she needs to maybe process it more. And, you know, that's, that's what I was trying to draw out of that character. And yeah, I think the girl, the woman I ended up casting was named Mary. So that was fun too. And that was easy. <laughs> that's well, I think that's yeah. very evident, you know, because, mm -hmm. because, and I think it is evident in that uh, one of the most telling things is how she's trying to hide everything. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. Um, I think that is very telling to tell us, oh, you haven't worked through yeah. all of this. Yeah. And, and then it's like when you don't deal with your issues and then one day there's like an explosion that seems to come out of nowhere, <laughs> but it's not out of nowhere. It's just, you know, it doesn't fit in the, in the hole you tried to dig for it anymore, you know? Yeah. So, it's festering there underneath. Yeah. And, yeah. Um, it obviously got to a, a very out of control situation. I thought you handled that, you know, really well, you know, um, where you were going with that and, um, you know, he falls down the stairs, very dramatic, you know, and, um, uh -huh. talk, walk me through that process because, you know, it has the potential to go, Oh, now we've killed somebody, <laughs> but I think it was, it, I think the, the blocking of it and the execution of it was Dude. handled nicely. That made it yeah. feel believable that something like that could happen unintentionally. Thank you for saying that. Yeah. It was crazy to to shoot it you know it was I'm like the first a first time director so I was like how is this gonna go and we had basically spent like well we shot everything over the course of one big long day and the first half of the day was just that conversation on the bench you know and it was so long and you know and it's heavy and you know dramatic and sad and hours of that you know and then it was like okay yeah let's take let's take a break let's eat some lunch you know we'll, we, we did all of that. And then all of a sudden we're seeing, doing this fight scene up on this balcony and it was like on the landing and it was so, uh, honestly, I was like, well, this is way more fun than sad combo on the bench. Like it, it was fun to try to figure it out. And, um, you know, I was really happy with how it turned out and I could see the time that she kind of like elbowed him and he, and he pushed away and I was like, we got it. That's the one, you know, I didn't say that right away, but I just kind of knew right away that that was the one. And I was really thankful for how it went down. And, um, Mary was really willing to, well, both of them, they were really willing to kind of be a little rough with each other. I was, I was kind of like, Oh, be careful, you know, but she actually, uh, injured, like injured her hand and she like, didn't care. She went with it. She's like, I'm not going to wash it off for the next day, you know? And, uh, and yeah, that went surprisingly well. And they just went with it. We got like a great, like prop iPhone off of Amazon to use for this, you know, when she throws it as hard as she can down the thing and got a good sound effect there. So yeah, that was, that was fun. And it's funny because, uh, I don't know how you read it, but most people are like, I can't believe she killed him in the end. And I'm like, well, I was trying to like it, leave it ambiguous. If he was injured, I guess he could have died, you know, but most people are like, I can't believe she killed the guy. And I'm like, well, that's fine. There was, no, there was a bit of a question, you know, yeah. there wasn't, there wasn't blood, you know? Right. And, and so you go, well, it wasn't that you know, it wasn't that far of a fall, but they're concrete <laughs> steps. You know, these are things that were going through my head when I watched it. And I did, I, I got the feeling if it makes you feel better that I was like, it could be either way. He doesn't necessarily have to be dead. Yeah. I'm not sure that he is. He's definitely very still. There's not a lot of blood. That right. Yeah. Yeah. Very hard fall. We didn't yeah. see how he fell down the stairs. Right. Regardless this ain't a good situation for father right. Mary. Like this is right. <laughs> but yeah. And the point is that she doesn't know either. That was really the point. Like she's so concerned with getting that phone away from him 
uh, that she's not, she kind of like gets him away and throws it and then kind of realizes what she's done. So that was what I was trying to do was like create a real good, like, what have I done moment at the end? So hopefully. Yeah, it felt very like urgent and chaotic in Mm -hmm. such a good way. Like that, that is what could happen in a Mm -hmm. situation with yeah. someone, like you said, that hasn't processed, that hasn't mm-hmm. been dealing with this properly. I have to get rid of this. I am not paying attention to the fact that I am on the edge of stairs, that <laughs> I'm bumping this person. All I am focused on is this phone. And I haven't even yeah. thought through how I could probably even deal with this picture. That's probably not even that big of a deal. You know, right. it, it, right, it was right, very right. evident. So I think you did yeah. your job well. So well, thanks for saying that. Oh, I <laughs> um, that's exciting. Well, I guess um, we have time for one more question. I don't know if there's, I haven't found any that have popped up or if anybody, you know, that's um, popped in has any questions, um, you can raise your little hand. Um but, you know, uh, I mean, I think we've probably tapped on some of this, but I would like to give you one a more opportunity to talk about some of the um, theological components mm-hmm. or um, if there were verses or stories or, or concepts that you were trying to get through that maybe we haven't already addressed um, um, mm-hmm. in the film. Um, well... Let me think about that for a second. I guess uh, I didn't come at it with any sort of, well, I'll, my my thesis project for my theology and arts degree was a collection of poetry. So um, I wrote um, and kind of self-published a little book of poetry. And that was about sort of the de- deterioration of uh, of a relationship and if people are interested in reading some of those poems, I have, uh, they can reach out to me. Um, I have a, a website, storybeacon.com, and there's a way to reach me through that website. And there's a little post on Story Deacon, my blog, which has been neglected and not updated for a while. But you can still find the, the article about um, my poetry collection, which is called Certain Parts. And in that, I engage with uh, Song of Songs, uh, Story Deacon, not Beacon. It's oh, sorry. A D. It's okay. Um, so there yeah, there you go. Um, so yeah, uh, in in my poetry collection, I engage with Song of Songs quite a bit um, on just a very human level. And um, I think Song of Songs, everyone's very quick to make it uh, just very allegorical and very spiritual about like our relationship with God and stuff <laughs> and not just the, um, you know, just a recognition of the, how powerful romantic love can be and, um, how it can really do a number on the human psyche. Um, so, um, so yeah, I, that was maybe a launch pad for some of the, the stuff that I engaged with via narrative, and father mary that's wonderful i love that i i just um i'm so thankful that we were able to screen your film and to talk about some of these issues here today just so much food for thought and um we need more artists like you artists of faith that are making (laughs) films and um art that are challenging to people you know, no matter where you are on the spectrum yeah. of your faith, um, but that bring up questions like this and wrestle in a real and relatable way. So thank you for making this film, even though it was just part of your application to a directing mm-hmm. program. I hope that it is the first of many for you oh. and uh, that you will continue to write and share your work with us. It's just really yeah. excellent. And um, thank Thanks you. Thanks for so the opportunity much. and for your encouraging words and thoughtful engagement. Yeah. I really appreciate it. And thanks for Absolutely. having me. Cool. Absolutely. Awesome. Well, best to you. And yep. um, we'll see everybody back here. I think we have a few more um all nations food and arts festival presentation so check our website and you can check out uh the few remaining programs that we have coming up this week thank you all so much
Bye-bye. Bye, Siri. Thanks, y'all.